Hello, my name is Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This is part C of a lecture on slope for linear equations. Uh, by the way, slope, a little factoid for you, slope is only defined for linear equations. There's no such thing as slope for a curve. So uh, that's just a little side note. Anyway, part C here, we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about slope and give more detail uh, about uh, some concepts that you might have never known about slope uh, and uh, and then the next video we'll talk about some applications and how to understand the meaning of slope within applications which is probably the most important idea in uh, in a lecture on slope now in the last video I had this little applet up here this applet is a Wolfram demonstrations project applet uh, you can Google Wolfram Demonstrations Project and it'll come up with a nice beautiful website and you can search through a bunch of their applets uh, and you can download a, uh, a plugin for your browser that'll allow you to play with this stuff. Uh, but anyhow, I want to talk or use this applet to talk about a very important property of slope for linear equations. Um, so let's go ahead and try to find the slope of this linear equation right here. And in fact, let me copy and paste this. Now, as you can see, um, we could easily calculate the slope of this line by using the points given. So remember, we use the letter m for slope. That's just a tradition. And remember, the slope is defined to be the change in output over change in input. And I'm just going to let you know that this is the x-axis. We also call it the input axis. And this is the y-axis. And we also call that the output axis. So there are a couple ways to think, or a lot of ways to think about slope. It's rise over run, or it's another th way to think about it is it's change in y over change in x, or you could say it's change in output over change in input. Any of those are equivalent. Whichever way is easier for you. A lot of students really just memorize the first one. Um, and because uh, it's a definition, we're defining slope to be this way, it is a memorizable item, unfortunately. Um, I try to teach where you don't memorize very much, but when it comes to the definitions, you have to memorize. It's like somebody has to uh, tell you that an object that you're sitting in is called a chair. You have to memorize that word to have a, commu uh, to have a conversation with anybody. Uh, because at some point, you're going to mention that you sat on a chair or something like that. And if you don't know that definition by heart, uh, then you'll have a hard time communicating what you sat on. All right, so to find the slope of this line, I can say, okay, well, I see I have a couple points here. I have the point negative 4, comma, 0 that this line goes through, and 0, comma, positive 4. So the difference in the outputs, well, the first y value here is 0. The second y value is 4, so... That's the difference in the y values. And the difference in the x values. The first x value is negative 4. The second x value is 0. Okay, so let me highlight the x values, and I'll highlight the corresponding y values. Right. And it's very important to uh, keep these stacked properly. In other words, this x value of negative 4 and this y value of 0 are stacked on top of each other 0 comma negative 4 or I'm sorry 0 and negative 4 and this x value of 0 and this y value of 4 are stacked on top of each other as well so th please keep the the stacking proper doing some simple mathematics that's negative 4 over negative 4 or 1 so the slope of this line is a positive 1 and as we discussed in the last lecture because it's increasing from left to right this line is increasing the slope should be positive positive. and that's uh, something you should always check uh, bec before you uh, give an answer for slope you should make sure that your number whatever your number is the sign of it matches uh, what the picture is giving you. So the picture is giving us that the slope should be positive. If I calculate the slope and I got a negative number, I would 
then stop and back up and figure out where I made my mistake. Now, that wasn't really the point of what I'm doing here. What I'm going to show you is that if we would have taken a different point, and I'm looking right here and I see the point negative 2 comma 2 is also on this line and the point the point negative 3 comma 1 is also on the line. And I'm going to show you a little interesting little factoid here. So if I use those two numbers or those two points, sorry, to calculate the slope. Well, let's see. The slope is I'll call this my um, second point. Remember, uh, we could use rise of run, change in y over change in x, or change in output over change in input. Um, a, a lot of teachers teach this formula. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's not a bad formula to have in your brain. Uh, it actually leads to a, a, a version of a linear equation we can use in the future. But um, that's extremely uh, notation heavy. And saying y2 minus y1 is the same thing as saying change in y. So I'd rather you understand that when somebody says, oh, I have a change in money, it means the amount of money I had initially, uh, or the amount of money I have right now minus the amount of money I had initially, or something like that. That's called a change in money, is when you take an amount now and subtract off the old amount. So change in y would be the amount now minus the amount before. And the change in x would be the amount now minus the amount before. So, uh, you know, I, that's why I don't really have students memorize this formula either. I just have them memorize change in y over change in x. But using those two red points, start a fraction bar. Let's go ahead and call this point right here point 2. We'll call this point point 1. So this will be my second set of x and y values. It doesn't really matter. You could do it either way. In fact, I'll show you that it works in a moment here. Um, so the second y value is 2. The first y value is 1, right? 2 and 1. And I'll even highlight those real quickly just so you can see what I'm talking about. There's 2, there's 1. And the first x value is a negative 2, and the second x value is a negative 3. Negative 2 minus a negative 3. Remember, change in x or y means the first minus the second first minus second. So there's a minus sign between these numbers. Even though the number is negative, there's still a minus sign between them. Doing a little simple mathematics, that's 1 over negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So it turns into 1. How curious is that? That it didn't matter that we had two other points here. The slope is still the same. So it turns out that no matter which two points you use on this line, when you calculate the slope, it should always be 1. So the slope of this line is always the same. And that's just basically telling somebody, listen, no matter where you start on this mountain, it's, you're gonna, it's the same steepness, no matter where you're at. And that should make sense. Now, I'm going to address one more issue here. That the slope of this line, had I used, let's say again, point 0.1 and point 0.2 here, had I switched the values, in other words, if I said, okay, change in y, I'm going to start by writing this y value first, 1, minus the second y value, 2, over this x value, negative 3, minus the second x value, negative 2. Now, remember, the y value 1 goes with the x value negative 3. So y value 1 goes with the x value of negative 3. And the y value of 2 goes with the x value of uh, goes with the y value of 1. So, sorry, I, I said that incorrectly. The y value of 2 goes with the x value of negative 2. Sorry about that. The y value of 2 goes with the x value of negative 2. So I just want you to make sure that when you look at this, that they're stacked to where this stack is the this point and uh, the, the first stack here is the other point. Okay. But notice the ordering on this is different. It's opposite of the ordering on the first try. So let's see what happens. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1, negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1, and guess what we get? 1. 
So it turns out it doesn't matter which point you consider to be your first or last point. It doesn't matter at all because the slope will always compute to be the same. The one thing you do not want to do is mix these incorrectly. So uh, I'll write this in red. Red in this instance I'll say is a bad thing. You do not want to do this. Oh, difference in y values is 2 minus 1 and the difference in x values is uh, negative 3 minus a negative 2. Do you see what I did incorrectly there? This y value is 2, it should be linked to this x value of negative 2. So this y value of 2 should be linked to negative, wait a second, negative 2. Aha! You see I didn't stack it properly. I basically said, oh, second y value minus first y value over first x value minus second x. I swapped how I did the subtraction. So be very, very careful. That's that's the one thing that I see happens um, if I don't talk about this. So as an instructor, I try to talk about this so that students don't make that mistake. That last little bit is all summarized by this one uh, theorem, that lines have constant slope. In other words, that no matter what two points you select on the line to help you compute the slope, it will always come out to be the same number, no matter which two uh, points you use. Okay, so that's that's what uh, um, that was all about. Now, I want to introduce something that's not usually in a textbook, and this idea is so cool. It's one of the best ideas you'll you'll come across in um, this lecture, online lecture. Um, it's a slope addition property. This is not going to be in a textbook, except for I know there's one textbook that has it. Um, the slope addition property is really cool and I want to demonstrate it before I write it down and so maybe we could see it. So what I'm going to have us do is build a table of solutions for this linear equation uh, and remember what I've said in the past is that to, uh, for a linear equation of this form 3x minus 2y is equal 6 it's very quick very fast to actually just plot the intercepts to, to graph this equation. So when it's given like this, where all the variables are on one side and all the constant terms are on the other, much, much faster to go ahead and say, oh, well, when x is 0, y is something, and y is 0, x is something. Um, but I want to uh, to actually use this. In fact, you know, I, I'm now that I'm looking at this, I'd, I'd like something a little more interesting or less interesting, I guess. So let me change this slightly to... Uh, to something like this. And, and the reason why I'm choosing this is because uh, I like, um, I, I, I want to be, a, I want to have a more of a good demonstration here. So uh, in this case, uh, let's go ahead and build a table of solutions for 6x minus 3y is equal to 6. Okay. So uh, here we go, x, y, sorry that I changed that part way through, but now that I'm thinking about it, I think this is a better better tactic. Now uh, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, yes I know I could easily say when x is 0 cover up this 6x here and say well when x is 0 uh, we have negative 3y is equal to 6 divide both sides by negative 3 and you get 2. That's that, or negative 2 actually. That's, uh, that's true and you could also say when y is 0 cover up the negative 3y there you get x is equal to 1. So it is it is true that you could quickly do that and you have two points and you could graph that. But I'm going to go ahead and solve this for y here anyway. So I'll subtract 6x from both sides and then divide both sides by a negative 3. So y is equal to a negative 2 plus 2x. And so I have this, this beautiful um, equation here and let me write this in a format that we will eventually really love 2x minus 2 although I, both these are equivalent there's no real difference between these two equations but I'm going to use this equation here and plug in different values for x so let me go ahead and in fact I rarely do it so let me go ahead and plug in negative values for x as well so oops I mean to go through that Let's plug in a negative 1 for x. If I plug in negative 1 for x, I'll have 2 times a negative 1 minus 2. So that's a negative 2 minus 2 or a negative 4. And if I plug in uh, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 
If I plug in 2 for x, I'll have 2 times 2 minus 2. That's 4 minus 2, which is 2. And if I plug in 3 for x, I'll have 2 times 3 minus 2, which is 6 minus 2, which is 4. If I plug in 4 for x, 2 times 4 minus 2, that's 8 minus 2, which is 6. Now I said I wanted to graph this, so we built our table of solutions. Let's go ahead and graph this. You actually don't need to plot all those points. I'm just going to plot a few of them. Be like uh, a couple or, or three. Let me get a, a bigger pen size here so that I can do this. Um, when x is a negative 1, y is a negative 4. So somewhere down here. When x is 0, y is a negative 2. And when uh, x is 1, y is 0. Uh, I'll just connect those dots. If I, if I plotted the rest, they'd all land on this line as well. Okay. Now let's go ahead and compute the slope for this line. And it's actually pretty interesting because the slope is kind of staring at us right now, but, but I want to mention this anyway. So computing the slope here, um, let's just go ahead and use the two points, uh, negative 1, comma, negative 4, and uh, 2, comma, 2. All these points lie on the line, so I can use any two points I want to compute the slope. And remember, to compute the slope, you need two points. So slope is change in output over change in input. So let's look at these outputs here. I have a negative 4, minus 2. Let's look at the inputs. So change in y, change in x. Uh, we have a negative 1 minus 2. Let's go ahead and do this. Negative 4 minus 2 is a negative 6. Negative 1 minus 2 is a negative 3. And a negative 6 over a negative 3 is a positive 2. Now, I want you to look at the equation itself. Let me highlight the equation here. It happens that, do you see a positive 2 anywhere in that equation. Sure, right here I see a positive 2. That's This is going to become very important in the future. When you write an equation in this form, the slope is already given to us. The slope is what's attached to the x. As long as you solve for y, the slope is attached to x. Now I'm not going to say more than that right now because that's not the point of what I'm about to tell you, but it turns out that when you solve for y, uh, the coefficient of x is the slope. But I also want you to notice something here. When I start at x equals negative 1, and I take a step forward to x equals 0, that's a single step, isn't it? Just a little step forward of 1. How much did the output change by? Well, I went from negative 4 to negative 2. So in other words, I increased the output by a two, value of 2. Well, when I increase the input by 1 again from 0 to 1, again, the output goes from negative 2 to 0, or in other words, it increases by 2. When I go from 1 to 2 on the input, the output again increases by 2, and so on and so forth. Every step forward, I take every time I take a step of 1 in the x direction, the output is changing by 2. And that happens to be the slope. So that demonstrates what's called the slope addition property. For a linear equation with slope m, whatever that is, it could be 5, it could be 3 halves, whatever it is, each increase of 1 in input will lead to a change in output of m. So let's go ahead and try this in an example. So let's suppose that we were given a linear equation that has a solution of x equals 1 when x is 1, y is 2. Okay, so let me just go ahead and write a table here. And somebody was kind enough to tell me, hey, when x is 1, I know that y is 2. I don't know what the linear equation is, but they at least tell me that. And they tell me that it has a slope of 4. Well, we want to write a table of solutions, and we can actually graph this. According to the slope addition property, every time that we increase the x value by 1, the y value will change by the slope. In other words, that we will increase the y value from what it was 
by a value of the slope. So we'll add the slope to that y value. So our y value that we we're standing out before was 2. We'll add 4, be at 6. I'll take another step forward. And so the y value will again change by the slope, become 10. Take another step forward. The y value become 14, and so on and so forth. And now, now that you have this, you can actually graph this equation. I shouldn't say equation, I should say you, should, you can graph this table of values. And let's see, when, one, when x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 6. And when x is 3, y is 10. And if you look at that, those three points do lie on a line. Something like this. And if you calculate the slope of the line going through those points, you'll find out that the slope is actually 4. You can do it very quickly. And I will do it very quickly. I'll just choose two of the points. Let's choose the point 1, 2 and the point 3, 10. Remember, slope is change in y, or change in output over change in input. So that'll be the y values, the change in y values will be 2 minus a 10, and then the change in x values will be the 1 minus the 3. So you get a negative 8 over a negative 2, which is going to be a positive 4, and that's exactly what we were told the slope would be. It's a very interesting property and not something that you'll see in a normal, a traditional textbook or something like that. The slope addition property, very, very cool, and it gives you a lot of um, conceptual ideas about uh, what the slope really does to a line. It just means that if somebody sa tells me that the slope for a line is, um, let's just pretend, uh, 1.82, that means that every step along in the x direction, the y value will increase. So let's say this, these are x values of 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. The y value will increase by 1.82. Okay, so if it started at the height of 5.1, then we would add 1.82 to that. Okay, to get to the next y value, which would be 6.92. And then we'd add another 1.82 to get to the next y value, which corresponds to the next point, and so on and so forth. So that slope is just saying, take a step forward, add the slope. Take a step forward, add the slope.